Hi, I'm Lance Cottrell, Chief Scientist at Intrepid, and today I want to talk about the unmasking of Guccifer and the lessons we can take from that when we're trying to be anonymous or in alias online. So here's the story. A hacker with the alias Guccifer 2.0 managed to break into the DNC's email servers and steal all kinds of records. And he claimed not to be affiliated with Russia, although many people thought he probably was. But he was very careful whenever he went on the internet to hide his real identity using a public VPN service to hide his IP address. But apparently, he didn't always do that. So researchers were able to discover his real IP address on the one or few occasions when he went online without first enabling that VPN. And the IP address they saw went right back to a building in Moscow that's the headquarters of the GRU. So it's pretty clear that this is in fact a nation state backed hacking activity. So it turns out they're not the only people to have gotten burned by simple OPSEC mistakes while trying to maintain long-term online personas. Think about the hacker part of the LulzSec group, Cebu. He was burned in exactly the same way. He was using an online persona. He was in involved in discussion boards and chat rooms, always an alias, always behind a hidden IP address, or almost always. Just one or two slip-ups exposed his real home IP address and allowed law enforcement to close in on him. We even saw something similar with the Silk Road and the guy who used the alias Dread Pirate Roberts uh, was identified. In this case, not so much because of a failure to use the VPN, but because he didn't think far enough ahead. He was using different accounts, uh, but the accounts he used and the account names he used sometimes overlapped between his real identity and his Dread Pirate Roberts identity. And police were able to correlate these together to demonstrate that he was in fact the person behind that name. And so, that so that shows another important lesson. You need to start using these tools and develop your operational security before you really know you need it. In the very earliest stages of going online, before you have any idea this is going to matter, before you have any idea it needs to stand up to nation state level investigation, you already need to be perfect about your OPSEC. And that's a real challenge. You, if it's inconvenient, there's a real tendency to say, well, you know, this isn't that important. Let's just be casual. And it just can't ever work that way. It always needs to be bulletproof. And that's a hard thing for humans to do. It's a big ask. So the problem as I see it is that people aren't good at being perfectly consistent all the time. It's just not part of human nature. It's very easy to accidentally forget something once in a hundred times, once in a thousand times. And in many cases, you know, you forget to put on the turn signal on your car, that's okay. You forget to pick up milk on the way home, that's okay. You forget to turn on the VPN in a sensitive national security scenario, that's a big problem. Right. That can blow up your entire operation. It means that your activities are directly attributed back. There may be international consequences to these things. It can even put lives at risk in law enforcement contexts. But the fact still remains, people are going to make mistakes. And the key here is to build an, a platform, a set of tools around your activities that make it almost impossible to make those mistakes. I mean, even checklists aren't gonna do it for you. There's a famous saying among airline pilots, there's only two kinds of pilots, those who've landed with their landing gear up and those who will. And even with a co-pilot reading off checklists from time to time, airplanes still end up landing with their gear retracted. Right? This is a real problem. So what you need is something that's fail safe, that if you don't engage that VPN, for example, you literally can't go out on the internet. So until you turn it on, there's no surfing at all. That guarantees you won't accidentally go out to a chat room or a website or send an email without having engaged those countermeasures, right? The same could be said for things that mask your browser fingerprint, your system fingerprint, your canvas fingerprint, uh, you know, making sure that the accounts you use, you can only access the accounts that are associated with this persona from 
within that persona. You can't access it from somewhere else. The passwords, the usernames are all stored in a way that's associated with that. These kinds of tools, these kinds of setups allow you to be much more consistent without requiring the human to be inhumanly consistent, right? Having the tool there allows you to ensure mechanically that compliance without having to ask the human to remember it every single time. In some way, failsafe is a little bit similar to what you see in cars, where you can't put the car in gear unless your foot is on the brake and you know the car can't roll because they don't want you to accidentally bump it, put it into gear and have the things take off and forget to have your foot on the brake. So rather than saying, well, let's hope the person remembers every time, the car manufacturers have built it so that you literally can't take it out of park unless your foot's on that brake. And similarly, you want to make sure that your technologies are designed so you can't go out and engage until you have all of those protections up and running because it only takes once to blow the entire operation. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, I encourage you to look at some of the other videos that we've produced on misattribution, anonymity, and security. Please subscribe to this channel so you'll be automatically updated to all of our uh, future videos that re we release. And let us know what you liked about this and what other topics you'd like to see us cover going forward. Your feedback is incredibly important in helping us deliver the kind of content that you want to see. Thanks.